Hi, welcome to Glendale Today. I'm Lauren Tomachoff, council member from the Choya District, and today we're visiting Thunderbird Conservation Park. Thunderbird Conservation Park was acquired by the city of Glendale in 1956, but first it was acquired through a lease in 1951 from the federal government. The story goes in 1956, the Glendale Women's Club decided that they needed to purchase the park, so they went to the Glendale Rotary Club, the men, and asked them to purchase the park. The park is in the Hedgepath Hills, which is named for Robert Hedgepath, one of the early homesteaders here in the area. The park's uh, just under 1,200 acres and has over 15 miles of hiking trails. And today we're gonna to explore uh, all over the park and, and find out what a beautiful asset this is to our community. Been coming out here at this park since I was a little kid. And the last three years have been longboarding. And it's a lot of fun. And it's a good adrenaline fix for me. And uh, it's close and it's well maintained. Today we're going to explore the park. We're going to get a guided tour from the park manager, Brian Wagner. Brian, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me, Councilmember Tomachoff. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are Great. you? Wonderful. Beautiful morning. Yes, it is. <laughs> for the people who are listening, where is Thunderbird Park and where do you go? Where do you park? How do you access the park? Thunderbird Conservation Park is on the very north side of Glendale. We are located uh, south of Happy Valley Road and north of Deer Valley Road, uh, 59th Avenue. Uh, north of Deer Valley is our main entrance to the park. It's about uh, a quarter mile north of Deer Valley intersection. Uh, you can also access the, the park on the far north side, the northeast corner off of 55th Avenue and Pinnacle Peak Road. And then our third entrance to the park is off 67th Avenue and Patrick, which is Patrick is north of Deer Valley and just south of Happy Valley. So we have three entrances you can access the park safely. Great. There are parking lots available at each one of those locations. Um, so yeah, you can come right first into come, the park. First come, first serve for exactly. the parking. So exactly. get here early because it yes. fills up. Yes, it does. It fills up. So there's 15 miles approximately of uh, trails we actually located have a, in the park? Yeah, we, there's actually about 20 miles, just oh. a little over 20 miles of trails. If you take all the different little uh, chutes and shortcuts or whatnot, there's about 20 miles of trails. And what's the level of difficulty of the of the trails? With a... We have uh, easy trails all up to about a mid, uh, moderate to difficult trail. Uh, we don't have anything extreme difficulty. Uh, that's not what the park has uh, out here to offer, um, but uh, about a moderate to moderate difficult is our uh, difficulty. Now in the summertime, you always want to make sure you, you jump up one, one rating uh, due to the heat uh, and, and stuff like that. So the heat plays the biggest part in the summertime. So Yeah, so you, you see jump people up. coming out here that are unprepared for oh, the conditions all the time. in the summertime? All the time, and, and we have a staff person out here uh, during the week, carries extra water in his truck if you know somebody needs water for some reason. But yeah, we see that all the time. Uh, they don't bring water for themselves, don't bring water for their dogs, uh, don't have a cell phone, uh, forget where they park. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we have that happen quite often. So you need to really be prepared as far as also not just water, but dressed appropriately, you know, wear the right shoes. I've seen people, I, I use, use the mountain frequently. I know you know that. I'm a, I'm a frequent user of this park. I love it. But I saw some people Saturday morning, for example, in flip-flops. Uh, yeah, hiking the mountain, and it's—I it, mean, it's even in hiking shoes. It's you know, it's it's rocky and it's slippery, and you you really need to be prepared to make sure you don't hurt yourself. I've seen people people do fall down up here occasionally. Yeah, you want to make sure you have the proper footwear. Make sure your shoes fit snug; they're not loose. Uh, you want to make sure they're closed-toed shoe. Uh, all the trails are rock. Uh, we do have a paved roadway that goes through the park. A lot of people hike that, but you want to make sure you have closed-toed shoes on. Uh, you want to make sure you have proper uh, pants on. I, you know, shorts are great. Uh, sometimes in the cooler months, stuff your pants are better. Uh, make sure you have sleeves on your shirts, uh, hats, full brim hat instead of a, just a, a ball cap. I recommend sun lotion, sunglasses, uh, water, cell phone. Make sure you know where you're at. Yeah, you know? let somebody know where you're going. Exactly. In case something happens. I mean, you're, we are right, basically right in the middle of Glendale here, but yeah. still, you should let somebody know where you, where you are. But there's, is the park patrolled frequently by? by you and by city employees yeah during the week we have a park ranger that comes up here very often uh glendale police department is up here all the time as well uh, driving through the park checking on different things and we like i say we have a maintenance staff up here person up here uh, monday through friday 
and they start about, uh, they open the park first thing in the morning, and they're usually here until about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so uh, doing different issues, picking up trash, uh, checking the trails, inspecting trails for trail issues, um, checking the restrooms, make sure they're clean and stocked all the time, uh, getting ready for uh, reservations at the Ramadas or picnic areas. Um, and then the park rangers are, are on from 7 a.m. till midnight, so, so they're up here all the time as well. And what are the park hours? Uh, park hours are sunrise to sunset. Uh, and I understand 364 days a year, that the park's closed on one particular day every year. Well, we are open 365 <laughs> days a year. However, on July uh, 3rd and 4th, we do close early, and it's about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoons we close those due to the fireworks. Uh, we want to try to keep all the fireworks out of the park. Usually uh, that time of year out here, uh, we uh, follow the Maricopa County gui guidelines uh, for their urban parks and uh, wildlife parks for the fire danger, uh, along with the city of Phoenix. So uh, our fire danger usually in that time period of the, of the year is very high. So we want to try to keep all the fireworks out of here and keep people off the mountain that want to watch all the other fireworks around the right around the and then try to come down the mountain after dark where it's dangerous and exactly and then you get somebody that falls and then you're trying to find get people out here to find them and search for them and yeah. it makes it very difficult so we close the park early on july 3rd and july 4th okay how many employees does it take to uh, now the parks are all run by by the parks department so do they rotate the employees and or is there a dedicated staff just to this park we have one dedicated staff up to this park because it's so unique in the trails and and knowing the trails the, the wildlife that's up here the people that use the the park uh, that bring different issues up and, and knowing the maintenance of the trails and how to maintain them correctly or whatnot. So we have one dedicated staff person. We do have a couple of other staff people that are uh, we use as a backup up here as well or a spare person if that person's out on vacation or whatnot. But yeah, we have one person that, that knows pretty much everything about the park. You can tell you where everything is. If you want to see something, you know, right now we have a, a red-tailed hawk nest right along one of the trails with some baby chicks in there and he can tell you right where it is and go right to the location yeah. and that's that's just perfect so yeah people want to come out and see that sort of thing exactly too, as long as exactly. they don't disturb the animals so yes. and that's another thing that i mean that this is a conservation park so i mean you're not supposed to you know bother bother the native plants don't don't take any plants and uh what type of plants do we see out here in, in this park we have a lot of variety of plants uh, a lot of native plants it's all pretty much native plants uh, tree wise we have ironwood trees uh palo verde trees and mesquite trees are main our main trees plants we have all kinds of cactus uh, barrel cactus choya cactus saguaro cactus uh, we have uh, brittle bush uh, we have uh, creosotes out here agave wildflowers uh, we did a big yeah, wildflower yeah. project that uh, a couple years ago planted a bunch of wildflower seeds in the park uh, so yeah we have various types of plants some years poppies uh, we get lucky some, every every few years and we end up with a bunch of poppies that are you know they're they're in fact this this uh october there was some poppies that i think because of all that rain in september it must have washed them down and they they the seeds germinated and the poppies bloomed in October, which is kind of an odd time of the year for poppies yes. to be blooming, but um, I took, I, I'm here all the time. I took pictures of them. It was, it was really neat. What about animals? I mean, it's also a conservation park for animals, and so people yes. are not supposed to feed the animals, disturb the animals, harass the animals, kill the animals. Exactly, and, that, and that's a big thing. We have a lot of, uh, right now, with the temperatures coming up uh, right now and getting hot out, uh, snakes are huge right now. Uh, we've had a lot of reports of uh, rattlesnakes, king snakes. Uh, some coral snakes um, out here on the trails uh, and pretty much most of the time they're going to just slow it right across you know if they're wrapped up in a ball or whatever try to walk around and go on past uh, they're not really going to bother you um, if you start messing with them or tormenting them or harassing them yeah you're going to probably possibly could get struck so uh, you got to be very careful um, if there is an issue if there's a safety issue or whatnot uh, make sure you, you know 911 to call like i say once you get that safety tip make sure you have your cell phone with you uh, we have maintenance staff out here. You can always flag them down. They're always looking at the mountains. It's kind of like a, uh, a mountain lifeguard, pretty much, as you might say. That you know, they're always scanning the mountains, looking for people in distress or have a problem or, or something like that. Um, so we have snakes, uh, have javelina out here, uh, coyotes, uh, raccoons, skunks, all types of different lizards, birds. We we're talking about the birds, the the red-tailed hawk. We have uh, falcons out here, eagles, vultures. Yeah. Um, and then we have a numerous type of waterfowl that hang out at the uh, viewing blinds lake. So. Which is down, to, that's located down towards the bottom, at the bottom of the park? Yeah, once you, on 59th Avenue, once you pass uh, Deer Valley Road, it's right there on the right hand side. You can pull right in there, there's a parking spot right there. There's a, there's a lake with a, blue, a viewing blind wall right there. You can 
look right off there and see all the different waterfowl and stuff. So uh, in the times between January and uh, about the end, uh, mid to end of uh, March, it's just packed down there. There's so many cameras and stuff that people are taking different shots of different things. So it's yeah. really great. Yeah, we're, we're really lucky to have this resource in our community. What are some other safety tips you'd like to give people about coming out to the park as far as don't leave, you know, leaving valuables in your car. Make sure you take, you know, t take your stuff with you or leave it at home. Yes, that's a good, that's a good point right there. Uh, we have a, you know, I hate to say it, but there are some cars that do get broken in out here every once in a while. So make sure you hide your valuables, you know, put it underneath the seat, cover it over in the, in, if it's in the car, you know, put it in the trunk. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, be extra safe if you come from somewhere else and you're, you know you're coming out here to hike, put the stuff in the trunk before you get to the park. That way, you know, somebody's not overlooking and see you you put your laptop in there or whatnot. So uh, your purse and stuff, hide it completely underneath the seat. That way nobody can see it. Uh, make sure your car's locked. Take your keys with you. Make sure your keys are secured uh, tightly on your belt loop. I have loop found or, keys on the trail before. Or in your else. pocket. <laughs> Don't lose your keys. That's, that's a big thing. If you get all the way down to your car, you're like, oh, uh, I lost my key. So and then it, you got to. You're going for another hike. Yes, you are. Um, now, if you do lose a key up here, most of the good places to look at is uh, park rule signs. Uh, usually somebody will. We'll set them off at the park rule sign. They'll set them you know, on top of the sign or um, at the trailhead. They'll set a set of keys up there. That's where people should look if they lost their keys. Um, if not, uh, stuff does get turned into our maintenance staff and the park rangers so they can contact us as well. So I now I noticed uh, I've been using the park for about 10 years and I noticed that the, that the trails are, are actually getting real trail names. I, I always knew them as H1, H2, H3 for the Hedgepath Hills is that what the name was for, but now they're going to have, uh, this is going to be, the mountain over here is going to be Choya, or is it already Choya Loop? It's already Choya Loop, yes. Uh, we changed the nail tra uh, trail names about a, about a year ago. Uh, we took a survey, sent it out to the public, tried to get the public's input on it and what they want to name it. We tried to stick to all the names of, you know, different wildlife or cactus or whatnot within the park. Uh, and that's how we came up with the name. So we have a yeah, Choya Loop over there. It used to be H3. We have uh, Arrowhead Point, which used to be H2. Uh, we have Coach Whip that runs pretty much the whole length of uh, from 67th Avenue all the way over to 51st Avenue. Uh, and we have Sunrise, Flatlander. Um, you've got Desert Iguana, Chuckwalla. So yeah, it's, it's all names that either wildlife or plant species from the park that we Named the trails. So. Easier for people to remember than H, you know, H2, H3. Even though I mean, probably a lot of us are gonna, gonna continue to probably use that just because it's it's ingrained. But yeah, and I know they're they're gonna be putting up new signs or yes. redoing the old signs. Exactly, we're putting all new signs in the park. We got a a grant from uh, the Arizona Tourism Department, uh, and it uh, it's all new signs. Going to have the trail difficulty on every trail marker on your uh, trailhead uh, signage. Talks about the rules, uh, the trails. Uh, it give you a location where you're at. Uh, so if you park your car right there, you kind of know where you need to come back to. Uh, and, and then uh, trail names, uh, amenities. If you're looking for a restroom or whatnot, they'll have a you know an arrow on the trail post that says, hey, restroom, go this way. So uh, yeah, we're, all that should be in by the end of this month. Thanks, Brian. That was a lot of great information.